Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. I want to get into some really funny Trump stuff in a second, but let's start here. Why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next vice president of the United States, my fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan. <laughs> who was that? Right. Well, at least we know she's a lawyer. And she's a fierce warrior mom. So she's a lawyer and a fierce warrior mom, but somebody who everybody said who? Like, <laughs> totally irrelevant, right? Um, you know, I heard he was picking his VP. There were some rumors that he was trying to go after Aaron Rodgers, which of course wouldn't work, but at least it would have been more newsworthy. Um, but for him to come out and say this, let's go back to it. Why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next vice president of the United States. Now they all say that. Why say that when you have zero chance of winning? You're not going to become president. You're not going to. You become completely irrelevant. And then we're going to get to Rabbi Shmuley in a minute because he's a disaster and he's his disaster, right? Like this guy who. You know, he could verbalize and articulate truth or positions, and he had done some, you know, work that was noteworthy on the environment and against the boop, like he had actually accomplished some things. So he could have been like a valid truther candidate. Um, but his take on Israel and then everything he's done since has torpedoed any chance he had of winning the election with people in the truth community and then also the far left wing, the environmentalists, the people in the far left who, you know, would have voted for him. And he had a he had a coalition of people and you had two horrible candidates. I mean horrible candidates. And we'll show you Trump in a moment here. Some funny Trump stuff. But he torpedoed any chance he had to win. Now he's you know, this stupidity about some no name woman that he that, you know, she's a lawyer and a fierce warrior mom. Because the majority of people, when they heard that this person, who looks a little bit, well, let's just see what she has to say here. Hi, everybody. Hi, lawyer and, hi, and fierce warrior mom. And thank you so much for being here today. It is so good to be here in Oakland. <laughs> Woo, Oakland. Uh, <laughs> This city will always have a special place in my heart. You know, I, I grew up just a few miles from this very spot. Well, it's, it's great that here you are, nobody knows who you are. My mother, who's standing right there with her phone up. <laughs> what is there, like 50 people in there? She immigrated here from Guangzhou, China. And my late father was an Irish and German American. Okay, that explains a lot. <laughs> because um, when I first heard about this, my wife said, you know, Kennedy, she had whatever heard, we just got some sort of email or something that he was going to uh, endorse as VP. And so I went and looked at it, and I said, you know, the headline said Nicole Shanahan, but I thought the uh, woman looked Asian, and now that makes more sense. I want to tell you a little bit about my childhood. So you okay, great. Let's, we all want to know more about your childhood. Since you're introducing yourself for the first time. You can understand the source of my politics and convictions. My mother's first job when she came to the United States in 1983 was as a live-in caretaker to an elderly woman here at Lake Merritt. Well, it's an impressive story. By the time I was born, she worked as a dental office secretary. My father loved my brother and I dearly, but he was very troubled, plagued by substance abuse, and he struggled to keep a job. From watching my father and his struggles, I learned not to be judgmental. He was... <laughs> okay, sounds like a real winner. <laughs> It's just how you became a fierce warrior mom. He's doing the best he could. I think of him when I see the statistics of the millions of Americans who are addicted, depressed, or suffering. This is one of the epidemics of our time. 
It affects nearly every American family. I wish my experience was unusual, but it's not. I don't know how he picks this person. I mean, she doesn't look like she looks kind of scared and like vulnerable. And, you know, she's not somebody, I mean, you'd want somebody to go after Kamala and like, you know, you know these imaginary debates that you're not going to participate in. But um, this does not move the needle at all. And this person is like a placeholder, right? Like a, you know, a person like an NPC. It has become part of my determination to do something for our country. Woo! Coming third in election. <laughs> Coming a distant third in election to Trump and Biden. Kamala Harris and whoever Trump appoints. Every time my dad lost his job, our family just couldn't cover expenses. Food, gas, clothing, upkeep. It adds up more than you have in this situation. What do you mean adds up more? I know a lot of Americans know exactly what that's like. To just be to one... Have a, to have a, have a, a substance abusing dad who can't keep a job and... Misfortune away from disaster. I think... I don't think we would have made it without food stamps and government help. Woo! <laughs> My mom worked hard. Woo, food stamps! <laughs> but it wouldn't have been possible to keep it together without that help. As you probably know, I became very- Was there like 50 people there? Wealthy later on in life, but my roots in Oakland taught me many things I have never forgotten. That the purpose of wealth is to help. So you have a, you know, a victim-esque kind of, um, you know, uh, I don't know, NPC here who had a substance abusing dad and you have a former heroin addict as your, you know, as your president. I mean, it's like a winning combination. In need. Woo! That's what it's for. And I want to bring back, I want to bring that back to politics too. That is the purpose of privilege. The purpose of privilege is to bring it back to politics. Um, so she has privilege now. It didn't have privilege in the beginning, but now has it. And she wants to give back by coming in third, a distant third to Joe Biden and Donald J. Trump. Okay, I'm in the editing portion of the video. Um, as many of you guys know, I like to watch the videos for the first time. Sometimes I see a little bit of them and I'm like, oh, this will be worthy of my, um, you know, coverage here. But I like to react to things in the moment. And I didn't know anything about this person, um, this uh, VP candidate. And so you're going to see as the video progresses here, I find out more and more about her. But I'm going to do a spoiler alert here because it's significant. And she was mar married to this guy, Sergey Brin, who was the founder of Google. And so that's her claim to fame. She married the guy. And they had an undisclosed settlement in a, you know, 50-50 state of California, which may, means that she's probably a billionaire. Um, I don't know what she did beforehand, but the reason she's wealthy is because she married a guy. Right? <laughs> and so this is, um, you know, someone who was born into poverty and she's, they're doing the announcement in Oakland to connect with poor people. But Kennedy lived in wealth his whole life, right? And she grew up in Oakland in an impoverished area, you know, impoverished area with, you know, whatever situation was with her mom and her substance abusing dad. I mean, this is her story. She's given everybody, but she lived in Silicon Valley. And I went out there once the, um, Sajmark system, there was an ashram they built in Fremont, California. They had a lot of people, you know, people who are Indian that came over and were working in Silicon Valley. And it was a beautiful area. Like I went to California and really disliked LA. I mean, at a visceral reaction, I'm, you know, I'll never go back there. I flew through there once I, I, um, on my way to India years ago in 1995. And I went to the airport, the airport was a pit. And then later in 2016, I went to a spiritual gathering there and LA sucks. And uh, we went to the 
one of those piers, you know, we went to the beach there and it was a disappointment. There's this thing called the June gloom, which is, um, I was traveling with someone who used to live in LA and apparently it's cold in June. Like the, put these videos out, like LA's this warm, never rain, you know, just always, it's always nice weather. And it, it's not that right. It's not nearly as good as Florida. Like I grew up coming to Florida going to Florida. I lived in Florida. My grandparents were in Florida. And I always thought California was like Florida, and it's not. <laughs> like Florida is way better. The ocean was clearer. You know, there was people in in June who were swimming in wetsuits because the water's so cold. And so I was pretty stunned by that, you know, given what we've heard about LA. But I was very impressed with Silicon Valley. We went to this beautiful park by the ocean and we could see the Golden Gate Bridge. It's a nice area, but Oakland is not. Oakland is an impoverished community. She doesn't live in Oakland anymore. She's living in Silicon Valley. She's a Silicon Valley lawyer who married the head of Google and now is a billionaire, and she paid for Kennedy's Super Bowl ad, and she's been giving him lots of money, so he's put her on the ticket, right? But she's not impressive. She doesn't have a lot of, um, you know, she seems almost kind of weak and soft, and not that that's, you know, it's not bill for politics and she's a donor she's a patron of his right she's a wealthy woman he's a wealthy man they come from wealth but they're targeting this message but more importantly is one of kennedy's big claims to fame like the things that would appeal to people in the truth community and i guess people in the far left these were his his target audiences was that he was you know an environmentalist he was anti the bloop and he was anti-censorship. And he talked about the censorship that was happening on social media platforms and the censorship that was happening on YouTube. And he himself got people censored for talking about the bloop on various, you know, some of the famous people on YouTube. Some of the comedians, people interviewed him. They got um, community guideline strikes. And that's Google, right? And he's now using Google money to fund his campaign. <laughs> he's married the, you know, the, the Google ex, the ex-wife of the Google ex-wife, right? Who's, you know, got all that YouTube money and Google money and now backing him. But that was the same, you know, companies that he was supposed to be fighting against. You know, so he just gets deeper and deeper into the fraud of it, right? And pretending to be for the poor when you're ultra wealthy you know, I mean, you got money. <laughs> you know, you can always give it back, but she's she's dumping money on like his his Super Bowl ad, which cost I don't know what it was, like thirty million dollars or something. And so, um, you know, that's why he's she he selected her. All right, let's get back into it here. The other problem he has is this guy, Rabbi Shmuley. So he was accused of anti-Semitism because of statements he made about the the bloop targeting certain demographics and him saying that Ashkenazi Jewish people were kind of immune to it which caused a lot of issues remember and he was um, he went to the you know, he went, there was these congressional hearings that he went to that were um, about uh, censorship but they the Democrats, which he's a long time, you know, Kennedy Democrat, uh, attacked him for being anti Semitic and racist throughout the process, right? So he tried to um, rectify that by doing this. We're going to have questions at the end, and if you're quiet now, I'll choose you first, okay? He's well mannered. He's gonna make his reward in the guy for yelling out. If you're silent now, I'll give you the first question. If you're not... You know, I asked why is this night so different than all other nights. It turns out I had no idea. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby, Bobby, help me. <laughs> this disaster started off like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your apology, but thank you, thank you. Okay, Bobby, 
Help, help me understand, please help me understand why. Why, why does the charge of antisemitism cut so deep? It's You've been called effort. so many things since you launched your candidacy, even before that. COVID-19 is a very charged issue. The vaccines are a charged issue. The mandates are a charged issue. You were called all, all kinds of names. But you're saying that this charge of antisemitism cuts even deeper. Why? Um, I've spent a lifetime studying the Holocaust. I understand that the, um, the, the unprecedented uh, uh, injury murder of six million Jews during World War II and then the years and years of the, the centuries of pogroms that preceded those in Germany, in Spain, uh, in, uh, in, in Poland, Romania, and across the land. And I also have many friends who are, um, I have friends who are Holocaust survivors. I have friends who are uh, children and grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. And I understand the pain of anti-Semitism to those people. And I do not want to contribute to that pain. And I don't want people who have suffered in that way and whose lives have been touched by suffering to suspect that I, in some way, um, approve or endorse their suffering. And that's why it hurts me. You have a lot of Jewish friends. How did they react to the past few days? Larry David's a good friend. He's your shadchan. He's your matchmaker to uh, Cheryl <laughs> Hines, your wife. Uh, I, by the way, you were supposed to give him money. <laughs> did, you, did you give him, like, uh, the, the, the Jewish, in the Jewish community, if someone introduces you to your wife, you have to give him a matchmaking fee? I did not. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, so this disaster where he, you know, slammed the... Co uh, the um, the, the people here, um, here, right here. You with me, but you need to think about them. And you know, these are the issues that I talk to my kids about and that I want to talk to the Democratic Party about because the current narrative about Israel is not an accurate narrative. It's a narrative that is uh, that ultimate. And listen, if you want it, everybody can criticize Israel. That's not anti-Semitic, but if you criticize Israel and you are applying a different standard to Israel than to the countries around it, if you're saying, if you take the United Nations, as last year, something like, I don't know, 50 or 60 resolutions against Israel, more than all of the other countries in the world combined, and yet there are many, many countries that have really reprehensible human rights records, and they never get reprimanded by the UN. Oh, if you're holding Israel alone to this standard, and you don't hold nations to that standard that are much, much worse than Israel, and you have to wonder whether that is not anti-Semitism. So someone in here, somewhere in here, and I've showed this before, I don't want to show it again, but he goes really hard on Palestine and the Palestinian people. I mean, just egregious, really bad, and so much more. All the whole thing was egregious. But the whole interview, he's just basically getting on his knees and servicing this guy, and you know the defenders of Israel. But this guy, Reverend Shuley, is a disaster. One of my viewers sent me this. Reverend Shmuley, um dressed up. I guess this was um, some way to mock Candace Owens. And he went to what looks like possibly a hospital or something. Um, well, let's just watch this here. Are you guys, you Jewish children? This is not my day. This sucks. You're wearing Israeli flag? Esther, are you wearing an Israeli flag? What's this big nose that Zadie has? So he's, um, you know, these kids are young kids. And they don't need to know about this stuff that's going on. And certainly from not from this guy, right? So um, here's his Twitter feed. Apparently he had a debate with the real Alex Jones. There they are there together. Let's watch a little of that. I didn't know this was here because I uh, wasn't here when I looked at this the other day. You're the guy on Howard Stern doing all this wild stuff. You're the guy 
in videos you release yourself, it looks like your grandson or some kid that you're table dancing on, grinding on him. You're grabbing, I think it's your granddaughter's or a little girl's breast. You are, you're, you're talking about my penis on air and, and just now that my penis is small uh, and all the rest of this stuff. And you're sitting there, are a famous guy for, 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 you know, being, let, let's just say wild. I wasn't going to. Alex Jones is calling you. <laughs> over the top Al Alex Jones <laughs> Alex Jones is calling you over the top right theatrical he's calling you theatrical over theatrical I'm gonna raise the fact that you got kosher dildos and butt plugs I would ask you are you wearing one now and then you I'll tell me <laughs> you have a butt plug right now um may I answer now go ahead Mr. Butt plug God almighty is that really what's on your mind uh, butt plugs because uh, uh, his daughter has a in Israel, she has kosher dildos. You guys might remember this. I covered this, and I coined the term kosher dildos, <laughs> which somehow has made it over to Alex Jones. But his daughter, this guy, Shmuley's daughter, owns a like sex shop, which they're claiming is kosher. And then I read the definition of kosher, and kosher is about how food is raised and prepared, and it's a whole thing, right? And there can't be kosher dildos. You're the one on TV talking about my penis to five million no. people. And I didn't and I didn't talk about your PP. I was saying the moment you start focusing on other people's moles or lack thereof, then you make yourself fair game, Alex. Okay, so um that's what he was saying. So then he's got a lot of clips of him and Alex Jones going at it. And here, um he's talking about Joe Lieberman. Eighty two was a truly great man. I had the honor and privilege of knowing him quite well. We had many lengthy conversations. Joe Lee Lieberman was a disaster. So his costume here, he, Ben Shapiro was upset about. To paraphrase the great Winston Churchill when it comes to Ben Shapiro, never in the annals of Jewish history has one so small been guilty of a sin so egregious over a complaint so petty. Ben, you're complaining about a poor Emma, like a Halloween costume. You employed and raked in millions of dollars off a host who highlighted that Jews drink Christian blood, that the Israeli defense forces are guilty of genocide. Someone who praised Kanye West, who loves Hitler, killed 10,000 of your people every single day. You didn't create the Daily Wire, you created the Daily Liar, a sewer of racism that George Floyd died of a fentanyl overdose, not because he couldn't breathe with a cop's knee on his neck, and misogyny that Brigitte Macron, the first lady of France, has male genitalia. Are you guys not embarrassed? It's disgusting. But above all else, the Jews are killers. We killed Michael Jackson. We were on sex pedophilings. Ben, this stuff is, uh, is, is rancid. It's gross, and you should be ashamed. So this guy's going in on Ben Shapiro. So here, um, after posting 50 video clips, we're going backwards in time here. And then uh, he likes attention, right? He does everything for attention. And this is a guy that Kennedy bowed down and serviced when he was accused of being anti-Semitism. Anti, you know, anti um, he, and he's posting this thing, like he was really into the Alex Jones thing. It's a big moment for him to be on Alex Jones' crappy show and all of that stuff. Thank you, Candice, for the nonstop promotion. Did I capture it, it well when... You go to sleep at night. Is this how you see Jews? You're being fired from the Daily Wire is not the end of the story. Your grotesque, your grotesque blood libel against me as a killer will have legal consequences. What a disgrace the official Ben Shapiro keeps you on the air for two years. Spelt your blood curing lies about Jews on his platform. His own celebrity has been pre pre prematurely compromised. Happy Purim, Candace. So this was um, the, this is, he said, the, this is the Candace Jew. He's got all these, you know, money here. He's got all this filth written on him and this stuff with all the, you know, prosthetic nose and all these things, right? Um, so he did all this as intention grabbing. And, you know, it just goes on. The guy posts all the time as Candace, you know, this is the, for the Purim holiday. Um, and he went and he, you know, he was like going back to this thing with the kids. 
Are you guys your Jewish children? This is not my day. This sucks. You're wearing Israeli flags? Esther, are you wearing an Israeli flag? Touching the kids inappropriately, and they don't need to see this and have this image. You know, they're growing up with this image like they're they're not aware of this they're just innocent young kids and he's bringing this to them right and you know again this tied to kennedy this is kennedy's guy this is kennedy who the guy kennedy chose to go out and bow before when he was accused of being an anti-semite destroyed kennedy's candidacy and he's linked to this guy right i mean alex jones is calling this guy over the top right <laughs> So, you know, this guy's a publicity whore. You can see him everywhere. He goes on Piers Morgan. He gets on as many shows as possible. And he's loud and he does these things for shock value. He uses these kids as props. And obviously it's something he does a lot. Does a lot. And he does a lot of sort of guilt uh, stories about, you know, horrific things. It, you know, these things like he's somehow a champion for the oppressed. But he's all about himself, right? There are people like this who are talking about whatever abuse is going on in the world and this is for him it's specifically about abuse of jewish people but he's really just self-promotional like he's using that to promote himself and he's using these kids to promote himself like he shouldn't be dressed like that in front of these kids and involving them in this whatever it is right candace owen feud and none of it's important like not that candace owen is good or alex jones is good or ben shapiro is good they all suck right but this guy stands above them. Like some people are just worse. <laughs> like you, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel, and then there's below the barrel, and this guy's like below the barrel. He's just a despicable human being because he's also supposed to be a man of God. He's also supposed. These guys are reporters, and they're into shock value, right? You know, Howard Stern. These guys. He was on Howard Stern or whatever, doing weird stuff. They're all into shock value. Alex Jones is into shock value. They all are. And this guy's worse on shock value. He's exploiting kids, manipulating, you know, historical narratives for personal aggrandizement. And he's supposed to be a man of God on top of it. He's supposed to be a rabbi. You know, he's supposed to be a, you know, a, a person who's a, a religious person. And his daughter is selling these uh, kosher dildos and all these things. It's just gross. <laughs> you know, like it's just um, a, a bad decision to link yourself to this guy but kennedy just goes and does that now he's linked himself to google it's an absolute disaster like he just i mean just an absolute failure on every level like uh, just a guy who had knowledge and the ability to express the truth or point of view in ways we've never heard anybody do it he did these great interviews you know he was impressive and his decision making and the way he's torpedoed his campaign the self-destructive nature but you know this guy's a, a drug addict right kennedy was addicted to heroin he had a drug problem he had a womanizing problem he cheated on his wife like 30 times or 35 times in one year you know and then i mean this woman's backing him this uh sergey brin's former wife you know with his google money <laughs> she got through a divorce and, you know, like, what a mess. <laughs> you know, it's just an absolute mess. Reverend Shuley Boteach dresses up as Candace Owens' Jew for Perum and pretends to sip on Christian blood in bizarre video after conservative commentator left the Daily Wire flying clashes with Ben Shapiro over Israel and Hamas. Um, yeah, there's Alex Jones got involved. And here he is dressed like a cowboy. I had the great honor today, really one of the most special honors of my life, of reading the Megillah for a beautiful baby, an infant who's been in the hospital the past four days. He was born with severe uh, mental and health challenges, but his parents who- You're such a caring person that you're using this to, you know, bring tension to yourself, right? And before he dies, because he knows he's going to die, Svi Kulitz, who's been robbed of, of love because his wife is dead, he's been robbed of eternity and, and hope because all of his 11 children are dead. He's been robbed of his day. So you see, you know, playing it on thick here. Um, he who fills it were the eternal words of the Jewish people, that ultimate, infinite, unbreakable statement of faith, Shema Yisrael, Hero Israel. 
Hashem Elokeinu, the Lord is our God. The Lord is our God. Um, <laughs> and so that's why you have to sell kosher dildos or you get your daughter to do that. Um, but he just posts constantly. The guy's always, you know, he's somebody who is um, trying to make more of a name for himself by doing outrageous things that even Alex Jones is, um, you know, offended by. <laughs> and so that's Shmuley. Then this happened. I haven't seen this yet. Just in, the super PAC backing Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s bid for president says it raised $2.1 million in the hours after he announced his choice for vice presidential running mate yesterday. He they, they have billions, right? Biden has over a billion dollars. I mean, I don't know what Trump is using. But, you know, we're talking about, like, this is Kennedy who raised $2.1 million from, I mean, I wonder if the woman herself, she's wealthy, donated. <laughs> That was her donation, right? He picked Silicon Valley attorney and entrepreneur Nicole Shanahan as his running mate. He said this about his role in the race. Our campaign is a spoiler. I agree with that. It, woo, it's a spoiler. They have, a, they have an echo going on there, but there's just a smattering of people. There's probably like 100, 200 tops. For President Biden and for President Trump. This all comes as RFK Jr. is still battling to get his name on a majority of states' ballots in November, a challenge that his running mate, who has already contributed millions toward helping him advertise, can certainly help take on. This campaign is up against the most powerful financial... So she's contributed millions. ...interest in history. We also face a determined campaign to keep us off the ballot by fair means or foul. I'm grateful. It's foul, JRFK. And Nicole has put her self-interest aside and made the momentous and very, very difficult decision to embark with me on this extraordinary crusade to win back our country. Panel is back here. Uh, let's first talk about this choice that he made. He could have gone with somebody with high name ID. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, which we should have. Although I'm dying to know what happened there. If that oh, was she, she said Aaron Rodgers. I stepped on that. Aaron Rodgers, although I'm dying to know what happened there. If that was a real thing. Yeah. He went for money, uh, big time money. And as I mentioned, she has been uh, giving him uh, high dollars to get on, on air and, and her, his super PAC as well. Yeah, she's a venture capitalist, uh, formerly married to Google uh, founder Sergey uh, Brin. Uh, and okay, so there it is. <laughs> as you mentioned, Dana, she uh, helped him fund that uh, Super Bowl ad a few months ago as well. Um, I mean, it, Kennedy, uh, based off the polling that we have, Bloomberg Morning Consult has, he's getting about 9% of the vote right now. Yeah, it's just irrelevant. Let's see, here's Trump right here. Says the following RFK Jr. is the most radical left candidate in the race by far. He went on to say he is crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, not mine. I love that he is running. Um, does he protest too much? Well, I mean, President Trump, former President Trump, is very good at framing and very good at making. Wait, he's good at something? Is he actually good at something? Trying to make something be what would be best for him. And in this case, I think that's what he's doing. Solely best for him, right? Because. The Democrats and the liberals are not into Biden uh, like they were. And maybe their hatred of Trump will bring them to the... Yeah, the whole thing's a joke. What is Nicole Shanahan's next worth? It's been widely reported that Shanahan is worth between 5 and $6 million, but she may be a billionaire. <laughs> Her 2023 California-based divorce from the 10th richest man person in the world, Sergey Brin, was settled in confidential arbitration. And so that's his thing, right? So not to be outdone by all these craziness, here's Trump. Is Donald Trump is desperate for cash. And while it might look like he just pulled a rabbit out of a hat with today's debut of his media company on the stock exchange, the full story is complicated and way more trouble. We're going to dig into all of that. But first remember, Trump has been hawking anything with his name on it, of course, for his entire life. That's his shtick. Recently, as he's being squeezed by astronomical legal bills, running a campaign, getting outraged by the other side. Remember Trump ice water? 
It's a multi-million dollar business and I want a piece of it, he said on The Apprentice. The selling has gone into overdrive. Trump's latest branded merchandise includes the Victory 47 cologne by President Trump. <laughs> it's a hundred bucks. I have his quote, the signature scent of strength and success encased in a luxurious gold bottle. The gilded bust of Trump serving as the cap. The collector's piece can be yours for just $99. Trump's scents are available alongside his new line of sneakers, including the Never Surrender High Tops, quote, bold, gold, and tough, just like President Trump. Limited edition pairs went for $399 before selling out, though I don't think they've shipped them yet, so we'll see if that ever happens. You didn't get your pair yet, is that what you're saying? <laughs> you haven't got your Trump sneakers yet? I don't think they've shipped yet. I've been looking. <laughs> and just today, the ex-president introduced a new product, the God Bless the USA Bible, named for country singer Lee Greenwood's classic tune. For just $59.99 plus tax and shipping, you can own an easy to read large print copy. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. That's my favorite. <laughs> He's got many. He's got all kinds of different Bibles. Favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. All right, what's your favorite passage from it? This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again oh is our... Oh, my God, he's, he's, he's going south here. He's got some kind of eczema going on there. His hair is fading like he's gotten old and creepy. He's got his own crib keeper mullet going on here now. Our religion, religion is so important. Oh, here, let's go back. There's fish boy here. Important. It's There's fish boy action going. You can't, you can't unsee it, fish boy. So missing, but it's going to come back, and it's going to come back strong, just like our country is going to come back strong. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Okay, really stuck the landing there. Now, you may be wondering. Okay, so that's his Bible. And then MSC, NBC had its own nightmare here. Um, this is Rachel Maddow. During Donald Trump's time in office, and during his effort to throw out the election result and stay in power anyway, and during his effort to run for election again after having done that, is Ronna Romney McDaniel. And she pitched in and helped. She helped set in motion the part of the plot that involved sending fake Trump electors to Congress from states that Trump did not win. So Republicans in Washington could use those fake fraudulent elector slates to contend that maybe Trump did win those states, even though he didn't. Okay, so what's, why are you talking about her? And don't believe me on that. There she is on page 23 and page 27 of the federal indictment. Don't just believe her, she's got the, she's got the facts charging Donald Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States. There's her personal appearance in this scene of the crime, as alleged by the U.S. Justice Department, in this ongoing criminal case. In Michigan, where the fake electors are themselves now on trial, she told the state of Michigan in writing explicitly, do not certify the election results. The Detroit News has reported that with Donald Trump on the phone with her. Okay, so what's the problem here? Why, why are you so upset? And why is that? He, he would have been as forgotten as all the rest of them had he not been able to attach himself to an institution like the Republican Party and had the leader of that party in his time not decided that she wouldn't just abide him, she would help. She would help with the worst of it. The worst of it. She would help with the worst of it. All of it, the worst of it. It's my understanding that MSNBC's leadership did not object to Ronna McDaniel being hired by NBC News when the matter first arose. But when the hiring was announced, an MSNBC staff essentially unanimously and instantly expressed outrage, our leadership at MSNBC heard us, understood, and adjusted course. We were told this weekend in clear terms Ronna McDaniel will not be on our air. Ronna McDaniel will not be on MSNBC. Okay, you guys are just, you guys got such great standards. So NBC News and M MSNBC and NBC are connected, right? But you know who else is connected to NBC? Donald J. Trump. Because he was there on Saturday Night Live quite a bit. He was there on The Apprentice on NBC. And he was always an NBC guy. Um, Rockefeller, 30 Rockefeller Center, all this stuff, right? 
and they hired this woman and so she's slamming her own network for not you know for hiring somebody that doesn't share her point of view she's an election denier she believes a big lie right um i'll do my big lie thing at the end of this but let's go to the next guy here it's the hammer guy let's run run the hammer clip here demanding to know where's nancy stop the hammering out there who's got a hammer where is it where's the hammer is it on the uh, go up on the other floor somebody go up there and stop the hammering stop the hammering call fuck griffin i don't care who the fuck to call stop the hammering empty out the goddamn control room and find out where this is going on it's either there or there or out there somewhere out of control Jesus Christ, crazy sound coming in my ear, this stupid hammering. I told you why I wanted those words cut. It just sucks. It sucks to be out here with this out of control sh. Any thing can come into my ear at any moment. These things. How do you say this guy's last name? Demanding to know. Where's Nancy? Well, there was a time when Sunday morning TV belonged to my friend Tim Russer. Boom. Who got killed for saying George Bush and uh, John Kerry were a part of the, uh, <laughs> the skull and bones, remember? If it's Sunday, it's meet the press. The line between the press and political operatives has been crossed countless times in both directions. Lewis Howe was an Albany reporter, a chain smoker, who believed that the freshman state senator Franklin Delano Roosevelt was destined for bigger things. Lewis Howe became not just Senator Fair and Square. Press or any Sunday show ever. Fair and Square, those are the words for today. He always has these words. This guy goes after it right here. Air, Ronna McDaniel, who was hired as a paid contributor to NBC News last week. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. So I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for her. So she has, she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf? We're all upset by NBC. Why would they do this, right? Are they desperate for publicity? Because they immediately you know, knew what was going to happen here. They knew it after they announced immediately afterwards that these guys would all be outraged, that they would hire such a person, right? Somebody who doesn't share their world's view, right? ...campaign. MSNBC will not use Ronna McDaniel as a political analyst, but I do have a few questions for her whenever she might want to come on this program, and I'll make it easy for her. I'll tell her the questions ahead of time. My first okay, that's nice of you. That's exactly the kind of journalism we need. <laughs> So I want to go in on the liberals hard here. This also includes my recent coverage of Don Lemons. But first, let me do the big lie compilation. But in terms of them saying the big lie over and over again, you know, there's these talking points. And when the media and the politicians use the same talking points, it's a nightmare. Like that's, you know, that's where you have fascism, where media and corporations and the celebrity culture all are saying the same things, you know your civilization's in trouble, right? So you have, you know, CNN that counted Trump's lies in gumballs, which was great, <laughs> which always gives me a chuckle. But this is the big lie. It's the gigantic lie, the lie that's out of control. It's the big lie. And so let's get to it here. Is a lie. But this lie, his big lie. The big lie. His own big lie. The big lie. I, I, I doubt any of them are stupid enough to believe the big lie of the big lie. By the big lie. Deranged by the big lie. Continue to perpetuate the big lie. That big lie. The big lie. Because 
The big lie. The big lie is the big lie. Is, uh, the big lie. This whole big lie election. There is a new big lie making the rounds. And big lies. Is a big lie. These big liars is the big lie. The big lie is just that a big lie. President Trump told a big lie. One of the biggest ever told. This big lie is perpetrate and act upon the big lie that, that Donald Trump perpetrated the big lie. In the face of provable lies. Lies that right now are continuing. Big lie. Trump's lies. Conspiracy theorists would rather travel across the country in service of the big lie. That Extraordinarily dangerous to spread the big lie. Pose the big lie. Standing against the big lie. Yeah, I said it. We know that the big lie was cooked up. You got the, the big lie. About the, the function of the big lie. He had been banned from sites like Facebook and Twitter, but his interviews with right-wing media where he continues to repeat the big lie. They're part of the big lie. Goebbels and the great lie. You keep repeating the lie, repeating the lie. Big lie. People will know it's one thing for one man, one woman, to repeat the lie over and over and over again. You know, I'm not excusing the Republicans and the right-wingers and certainly not the nightmare Trump supporters that are a disaster. You know, the whole thing, I mean... I don't care. There's nothing going to save the system. You know, I don't, whatever. But everyone's got a share of the suck, right? <laughs> but what's worse about the liberals, and it's here with the big lie, is that they're so arrogant. And, you know, not that the Republicans aren't arrogant, because they are. And they're, you know, annoying in their arrogance. And they're, you know, they're just assuredness. But the liberals, it's just something about it where they're so sure of themselves that they're so much different and so much better. And you saw this with Don Lemons and my recent coverage of him with Elon Musk, that they're so sure that the other side is evil. And you know, the Republicans and the right-wing truthers are sure of this stuff too, but there's just something different. And I think you can tell the distinction here. It's just they take it to another level. And there's this element in the liberal community that we're the educated people we're the sophisticated city city living academics who have science on their side we're the modern day thinkers and you guys are the old school neanderthal religious believing god believing family believing uh you know religious people whatever it is right um and that's the there's just this element that they're superior mentally and more sophisticated and they're just so much better than the more evolved, like they're the next level of evolution. Their evolution includes the Hollywood culture, right? The immoral Hollywood culture and all this stuff they're pushing with gender and all these things. And they think they just got it. And they're, you know, this is the next step of evolution. And, you know, everybody in the future is going to be multisexual and they're going to all have multi, you know, personalities and people are going to be, you know, all the things that they're embracing. And they think that's evolution, right? They think, you know, the people who are, have traditional marriages and traditional, you know, sexual uh, relationships and things like this and belief in God are lesser than them. And anybody who would be given a platform on MSNBC or NBC has to share their point of view. And this stuff with the big lie. Now, going into the election there was a lot of um, concern that Trump was going to try to steal the election by rigging the voting machines. And there was a documentary called Kill Chain, which is a good documentary on HBO. And the Democrats and the liberals were showing their concern for how easy it was to rig those machines. Those machines that are now infallible since Biden won, right? But people like Nancy Klobuchar or whatever, Lisa Klobuchar or Cindy Klobuchar, <laughs> whatever her name is, right, first name. And a variety of other high-ranking Democrats and liberals were showing their concern in this documentary. And, of course, there was going to be an influx of mail-in ballots. Pennsylvania didn't have their, their boop, boop together um, before the, the election because they had, they had no idea what, how they were going to deal with the, the influx of mail-in ballots because of COVID. They pushed the COVID agenda, the, the media. They worked Donald Trump on that. They got him to close down the economy, which, you know, if he hadn't done that, 
he would have been a shoe in to win. You know, Biden was just a joke. And then they, they roped him in, the, the you know, the whole Operation Warp Speed. And they got him to close everything down. And that allowed for, one, Biden didn't have to campaign. And two, they could use these mail-in ballots. And so, you know, the elections are rigged far beyond Trump's whatever he's saying. Like, these guys are all handpicked. And Trump was pushed out there for a reason. Trump is a complete asset to the whole New World Order agenda stuff, right? Whatever you want to call it. And so if you don't see that, you don't see it, but it's just there. It's so easy to see. So the whole thing is rigged beyond Trump's, you know, whole big lie thing. But there's legitimate arguments here because people cheat, right? Like they just do. People lie and people cheat. And Trump would have cheated if he could. I mean, he did cheat. You know, he's he, he gamed the White House. Like people are, oh my God, Biden sold out his you know, political position to his son and they made so much money. They're amateurs compared to the billions of dollars that Jared Kushner and Ivanka and Trump raked in from Trump's presidency. Trump monetized his presidency and he sold off his presidency. And he's, you know, back in the billionaire club now. He's like worth $5 billion when there was a lawsuit before the election where someone said he wasn't a billionaire and Trump lost because he couldn't prove he was a billionaire. And Trump joked about how, you know, how important it is. Like Trump's biggest, uh, when he was roasted on Comedy Central's, you know, do those roasts, there are jokes. The comedians have come forward and said jokes that he cut had to do with him not being as rich as he said. Like they, the, Of all the offensive things they say about him, that's like one of Trump's big things, that he doesn't want people to know that he's not as rich as they said, right? But, you know, they took Trump out of the White House and it like seems unlikely Biden could generate that many votes I mean there are people hated Trump I don't know you know I, I don't know what what how legitimate anything is or whatever like everything's illegitimate in one way or another and sometimes you don't see the illegitimacy but there's you know a valid claim from Trump and his people because we've rigged elections America's rigged elections not only in America but in foreign countries Elections are not, you know, I mean, to call it people the electional denialists, right? Like you're some kind of horrible person for questioning liars and thieves. You know, like that's what they've, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist because you question liars and thieves, right? Like this, you know, vitriol they put out there and that they're so high, so far above everybody else with their liberal agenda. And again, Republicans and right-wing people have caused these problems I mean, when they had power, they were a disaster. The Christian coalition and things, you know, they did things that were anti-God, anti-nature, and they pissed people off, and they created a power vacuum that's now being consumed or, or, or being uh, uh, being filled by the the Democrats and the liberals, and they have the power right now. They have the media power, they have the money power, and they're pushing this agenda. But there's just something a little bit more icky about the way the liberals are going about it. And that they would hire somebody that has a different point of view, but that person's just so evil. But why would they do it in the first place, right? It's just so greasy. Like, they're just so horrible. I mean, this is where we are right now. Like, this mess. And you, you look at this mess and you're like, oh, yeah, there's some good guys here. No, there's not good guys. There's not, I mean, across the board, everyone's contributing to an evil system that is, you know, it's a top down system where. We're given some wealth and privilege, whatever our position is in America, we still are better off than most people in the world because we're exploiting other people and robbing them of their resources because it's an evil empire. And the system is ungodly and it's demonic. I mean, it's both ungodly and demonic, which is kind of the same thing because it's ego-based and it violates the, the, whole, like the sacred laws, the s spiritual laws, and you know, it's so selfish. And we're all dependent on the system. I say this over and over again. We're all contributing to it. But this is, you know, sometimes people are just really bad. And like this liberal stuff with the, you know, their arrogance, like there's no legitimacy to any other point of view. When they're so remedial in their thinking and they're so, either they're, you know, out and out lying or they're just they're like dopes. <laughs> you know, like, like Don Lemon's a dope, right? If you buy into this agenda and you don't see the hypocrisy, you know, whatever. 
Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paravato, definitely important for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.